Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to give a lecture regarding current indication and challenges of gastric ESD during the Hong Kong Live. I don't have any COI related to my lecture. When we conduct endoscopic resection for REGI cancers, two categories of conditions should be considered namely theoretical conditions that regions involve no lymph node metastasis and technical conditions that regions are of size and location which allow unblocked resection. Regarding endoscopic treatment of early gastric cancer, mucosal cancers of differentiated type less than 2 cm shown in the blue column was considered as the absolute indication for endoscopic resection in the past. However, since the risk of lymph node metastasis was relatively low even in the regions shown in the yellow column, these regions were endoscopically treated by ESD as relative indications. And the Japan Clinical Oncology Group conducted clinical trials to prove the efficacy of ESD for those categories. Due to the excellent results of clinical trials of the JCOG study, all previous relative indications become absolute indication for ESD now. As a result, even large superficial cancers are now treated with ESD. This was a huge superficial gastric cancer extending from gastric cardia to the angles. It was completely resected by ESD in an unblocked fashion and judged to be curative. And we avoided unnecessary total gastrectomy in this particular case. This is another example of a new indication. This region is associated with remarkable fold convergence, suggesting the presence of significant ulcer scar formation. Actually, there was a remarkable fibrosis under the lesion. However, fortunately, the lesion was completely dissected by ESD and achieved curative resection also in this case. As a result of extending indications, a variety of difficult lesions are now eligible for endoscopic treatment. In addition to the large-sized lesion and regions with scar formation that I have already shown you, regions located at difficult area to approach or in anatomically complex area can be difficult to treat. This was such a case. Due to perpendicular approach, ESD for this region seemed very difficult. In this situation, mud bending endoscope is very useful to approach this area much precisely. I could dissect the upper part of the lesion smoothly with the mud bending endoscope until halfway through the procedure. However, the second half of the procedure became much more difficult because it was located on the gravity side. In this situation, some kind of traction technique is very uh, useful to overcome difficulties. I used a creep line traction technique and smoothly completed the dissection. This region was located at prepyloris and taken biopsy uh, revealed well differentiated adenocarcinoma. Unfortunately, it was partially embedded to duodena above, which seemed very difficult situation for ESD. In this situation, the water pressure method is very effective. We can open the submucosal space and visualize light dissection plane even within narrow space by active pressure of normal cell line. After completing circumferential mucosal incision, I immerse the target lesion with normal serine, then quickly start submucosal dissection by tracing the inner edge of the incised area using swift quag mode. Usually, it is very difficult to open the submucosal space because this area is located at the gravity side. Even if we use transparent food, we cannot open the space well.
Therefore, I prefer to use water pressure method in this particular situation. By flushing the normal cell line to the incised area, I can easily open the submucosal space. As a result, it becomes quite easy to recognize the dissection plane. Now we can see the blue colored submucosal layer stained by indigo carmine, and following submucosal dissection becomes quite easy. Now I'm opening the other side and try to hook the remaining submucosa tissue with the tip of the dual knife and carefully dissect the tissue using swift quark. It becomes a little bit floppy but still possible to control everything by torquing my wrist and utilizing up-down angle. Carefully checking the submucosa area, I found this sick blood vessel. In this particular situation, I usually use very low setting of forced coag, which is 0.3 of bio-3. This is very effective to upgrade this kind of sick blood vessel. Then I can cut here using a swift coag as usual. It is very effective way to avoid severe bleeding during the procedure. Now this is the final touch to give. And this is the final result. The tumor was completely removed in an unblocked fashion, and the resection bed was completely clean. There was no severe bleeding, no perforation, and this is resected specimen. Of course, margin was completely free from the tumor. The tumor was carefully resected in an unblocked fashion. Uh, this is a resected resection bed of gastric side and duodenal side. Both of them are quite clean, and of course it was curative resection. This is much more difficult case. This patient underwent distal gastrectomy seven years ago due to early gastric cancer in the antrum. A new region was detected at the lesser curvature of the gastric caudia. As you can see here, there was a suture line below the lesion. This is extremely difficult situation for endoscopic resection. After chromo endoscopy using acetic acid and indigo carmine, the border of this region became quite clear. After that, I placed a marking dot around the lesion using closed tip of dual knife using soft coagulation. This is the border of the oral side. And this is the border of the anal side. I injected the glycerol solution to the submucosal layer and carefully started the mucosal incision from the anal side using 1.5 mm dual knife J. By using dry cut mode, I could make a smooth mucosal incision, but there was a sick blood vessel within the submucosal layer. Therefore, I trace the same line using swift coagulation. Still, there was some bleeding, therefore I decided to stop it by applying close tip of dual knife. In this situation, I usually use spray coag 1.2 of bio-3. It is usually quite effective. Now all the bleeding completely stopped. Uh, then I decided to extend the mucosal incision a little bit more from the left side. Carefully connect the incision line to the right side, and I found that the submucosal space was quite tight, therefore I decided to inject a little bit more through the knife. It was quite effective. Now I'm conducting submucosal dissection from the anal side to the oral side by pulling back manner. It was quite smooth because of the nice submucosal fluid cushion. But unfortunately, anal side was still very difficult because of the tight submucosal space. I carefully dissected the remaining submucosal tissue and found that the surgical staple within the submucosal area. I removed it by utilizing end cut mode. I decided to move on to the left side in order to open the submucosal space. Carefully uh, conducted mucosal incision after giving additional submucosal fluid cushion to the submucosal area, I extended the mucosal incision to the anal side and connected it. 
There was a really thick blood vessel within the submucosal layer on the left side, uh, therefore I applied the opened tip of dual knife and used the very low setting of forced coag, which is 0.3 of bio3. After coagulating thick blood vessel, I continued the submucosal dissection very carefully. It was very difficult situation because of the hematoma within the submucosal layer and also the perpendicular approach to the target tissue. I carefully opened the submucosal space and utilizing both up-down and right-left channel, dissected the submucosal uh, tissue very carefully. Because it was quite difficult to open the submucosal space, I decided to use water pressure method. Now we can see surgical staples within the submucosal layer. I carefully dissected here uh, under the direct vision just above the surgical staples. Carefully hook the fibrotic tissue with the tip of dual knife. I dissected the submucosal tissue. Now we can see the dissection plane here and also multiple surgical staples. Then move back to the oral side and again injected the grease oil solution to the submucosal layer and carefully conducted mucosal incision also at the oral side. I could control the direction very nicely by torquing the uh, shaft of the endoscope right to left and left to right, and dissected the submucosal tissue by a pushing manner. And again, by using water pressure method, I could easily open the submucosal space. As a result, following submucosal dissection becomes easy and safe. This is the last part of the mucosal incision. After finalizing circumferential mucosal incision, I quickly started the submucosal dissection from the oral side. Again, water pressure method was quite effective to open the submucosal space. By visualizing the submucosal layer, I could continue the submucosal dissection very safe. Now I rotate the shaft of the endoscope and make upside down uh, in order to keep the safety of the procedure. Now I can see the beautiful submucosal layer opened by the water pressure method. By recognizing the muscle layer, I made a safe submucosal dissection for the remaining submucosal tissue. Now we can see the opening of the submucosal area. This is the end point of the submucosal dissection and safely finish the complete resection. Uh, this is the uh, anal side of the resection bed and this is the oral side of the resection bed. Uh, there was no severe bleeding and of course there was no perforation at all. Uh, this is the resected specimen, which size was nearly 6 cm in the greatest diameter. The region was completely resected by removing surgical staples. It was a slightly invasive submucosal cancer, sized nearly 5 cm in the greatest diameter. However, risk for lymph node metastasis seemed not so high, since there was no vascular infiltration and margin was completely free from the tumor. A few years ago, a simple scoring system, ECRA system, was proposed by a Japanese multi center study group. In this scoring system, tumor diameter more than 3 cm, positive deep margins, venous invasion, and tumor depths of SM2 or more are converted to one point and the lymphatic invasion is converted to 3 points. Based on these scores, which total 7 points, the risk of lymph node metastasis is stratified. As you can see in this slide, estimated risk for lymph node metastasis in the low risk group is just 2.5%, while it is 22.7% in the high risk group. Naturally, the cumulative su survival rate of the high-risk group is gradually decreasing. 
Since the non-curative factor in this case was merely the size, the score was one point, which was judged to be low risk. Estimated risk for lymph node metastasis was only 2.5%, and five-year disease-specific survival rate was 99.6%. Since this patient was already 87 years old and the prognosis seemed not so bad, he wanted to observe a clinical course without additional surgery. Well, these are my conclusions. Current extended indications of ESD are feasible due to excellent clinical outcomes. We can treat difficult cases with various innovations, and risk stratification is useful for further extension of ESD for early gastric cancer. Thank you very much for your kind attention.